All right, guys. Uh, in this case, we shall have a continuation on our inequalities. Uh, remember, we talked about the linear uh, part of our inequalities, just uh, basic questions, uh, simple inequalities. Uh, now we are going to be focusing on what we refer to as compound inequalities. Then you'll be wondering, what is it that now we are referring to compound inequalities? Uh, the compound inequality is a condition whereby now you've got two inequality signs that you have on your equation, well, on your inequality. The inequality that you're given, you've got two inequality uh, signs that you're gonna give, uh, that you're gonna work with, uh, which is different from the previous case that we just worked with where we are just given a single inequality sign, just one inequality sign. But this time you shall be working with two inequality signs. That is the compound inequality. We, talk, we talked about uh, how to represent our solutions on a number line. We talked about this, right? And also what is important is that the solution that you're supposed to have, it is supposed to be in the form of X is greater than A, uh, the same X being less than B. This is the format of how your inequality signs should be. Your inequality signs should be in this format. They should be facing this side, this direction. Whether there is a less than or equal to, uh, less than or equal to here, this is x is greater than or equal to a, less than or equal to b, but the direction, the inequalities, they're supposed to be facing this direction, the way that I'm presenting here. This is how always your solution is supposed to be. And on the number line, I talked about this, that your solutions, when it is like this, they're going to be taken in between two points, a and b. So your inequality, so the number line is going to be taken in between the two points, whether they're less than, uh, but where there's a less than or equal to, you have to shed in, uh, these circles. But that is how you're gonna have your number line at the end, as long you have got uh, this presentation of uh, your solution. That is how your number line is going to be like. So let us start with the first question. How do we solve now? Okay, minus three is less than three X minus one. Okay, here I'm reading from minus three. I'm gonna read from the middle term. Okay, let's read from the middle term because this is the term that is controlling our question, this one. This is the term. But the expression, actually, it's now an expression if for two terms, three X and minus, so if we're talking about a binomial, this expression is the one that is controlling our inequality. From this side, we are saying this three X minus one is bigger than minus three, is greater than minus three. From the same three X minus one to this side, it is now less than, it is pointed by five, so it's less than five. We are reading from the same three X minus one. This side, it is greater than minus three. This side, it is less than five. So this is how you're supposed to take it, uh, this inequality, all right. So this is how you're gonna solve. You're just gonna solve as if they were separated, just like how you solve separated inequalities. So you're gonna take minus one, this side, but whatever that you do, because there are two inequalities that you're considering, the minus one, you have to take it also to the other side. So as you take minus one this side, you also take it the other side. But remember the concept of our inequalities, we said on a normal part, three X plus one is less is greater than two. If we take this one, the other side, it just changes the sign to say it's a positive one. It will be a negative one this side, but this does not affect the inequality sign. The inequality sign remains as it is, right? So this is the condition that is gonna happen. Minus one, this side, it becomes a positive. So meaning to say, we are going to have minus three plus one. It's now a positive, all right? Then we remain with the three X is less than the minus one also taken this side becomes a positive, which is gonna be five plus one. So this does not affect anything about the inequality sign. Remember the inequality sign is affected the moment we divide by a negative sign or multiplying by a negative sign. But to take the terms does not affect, all right. So let's simplify. 
negative one plus one, negative three plus one, which is minus two, or you can just use your calculator. This is minus two, right? Then less a three X is greater than minus two, but the same three X is less than five plus one, which is six. So it is the same idea that in order for you to have X, you're supposed to divide because it's a multiplication, but whatever that you do is supposed to affect both inequality signs. Here we divide by three, here we divide also by three. So this will remain as it is we divided by a positive. Dividing by a positive does not affect anything. So this cancels here. You're going to remain with X, all right? There is greater than negative two over three, but the same X here is less than uh, six divided by three, which is a two. So that is the condition, all right? So you can present this on a number line. And what is important on a number line is uh, for us to know that, all right, let's say this is where we have our zero. Where do we have negative two is over three? Is it to the right or is it to the left? So negative side is on the left, the positive on the right side of zero. So this is where maybe we're gonna have our negative two over three somewhere there and a positive two maybe somewhere here, okay? Then uh, we do not have equal to, uh, this is greater than x is greater than minus two over three. The same x is less than two. So there is no equal to, so you're just gonna indicate the circles which are not shaded. So these circles, they are not shaded. Then you join in between like this. So that's how you present your number line, okay? So this is the indication of a number line. But just like that, you're done. All right, if there was a less than or equal, a greater than or equal to like this, you were going to shed on this part of minus two there to show that it's part of your solution, but we do not have that. So you're just gonna leave it and shed it. Then you join in between to say the boundaries they are in between, the values of X are found in between this uh, solution. All right, I want you to see uh, what's gonna happen on this solution of the second one, uh, because this one, it was a straightforward question. Most of us, we've got a confusion when the negative is involved, like what is happening on the B part, where we are given minus two is um, less, I'm reading from minus two, so it's gonna be minus two is less than, but uh, like I said, it's for you to understand, it's best for you to read from the middle term. This is uh, our middle expression, this one, right? So it is greater than minus two, the same middle expression is less than five as it is as the wall of this part is greater than minus two. The wall of this part is less than or equal to five. Okay, but that does not matter for now. We want to solve for X. So what can we do? There's a three, uh, three, which is a constant. So we can transpose just like the previous part of negative one. So you can transpose three, this side, and also that side. The moment we transpose these three, to the, the this side of the inequality, it becomes a negative, it was a positive three. So it changes the sign, it becomes a negative. So it will be minus two, minus three, all right, less. Here we are left with minus half x. So this is minus half x, less or equal to, we take the same three, this side. It was a positive, so that side is gonna be a negative. So it will be five, minus three. Just like this part, it is a negative, also this side, it will be a negative. That is how you affect that term because it is affected by two inequality sign. Uh, that is the idea. All right, minus two, minus three, that is minus five, or you can just use your calculator, but that is a negative five. Uh, less here, we're gonna have a negative one over two X. So this is negative half or negative one over two X. Okay, uh, sorry for that. Don't just know, you know, these softwares, they just affect, okay. But this is negative one over two. Just hope it's gonna be clear. Uh, I just hope it's gonna allow us to finish, guys. All right, negative one over two X, okay. Less or equal to a five minus three, right? So five minus three, which is going to be a two. So this gives us a two. Uh, all right, so the idea now was to find x this is negative of x so like i said you are supposed to divide because you want to remain with x 
So what is affecting x is the negative of x, this part here, which is multiplying. So how do we remove this? We divide, but whatever that we do is supposed to affect this side and also to affect this side, we are supposed to divide. And what are we dividing with? It's a negative. We are dividing by a negative. So it affects the inequality sign. Like I said, the moment you divide by a negative or to multiply by a negative, it affects the inequality sign. So what does it mean? All right, let us do this. Uh, in actual sense, we are supposed to divide. I want you to see what was gonna happen. You're supposed to divide like this to remove uh, the negative half, just gonna divide uh, by negative half. All right, that's negative one over two, right? Side, uh, guys, my network, I just hope you're gonna finish, you know, this, uh, this software is guys and networks, but this is what you're supposed to do here. Divide by a negative half also on this side, uh, divide by a negative half also on this side. So you're gonna divide by negative half each and every term. Divide by negative half by negative half. So this will be negative five divided to negative half, which is going to give us a positive 10. On your calculator, please make sure that you divide uh, properly. This will give you a positive 10. But the effect that I want you to see is on the sign, the inequality sign, because you divide it by a negative. The sign is going to reverse. It is going to change the direction. So it is going to face inside. It was facing this side. So you're going to see your sign now facing this side because you divided by a negative, all right? Uh, so on and so on. This cancels, guys, uh, because this is the same that we, part that we have. So you're going to divide that part. Uh, we just remain with what? With x, all right? So this will be x. So you're going to have our x on this part. All right, guys. All right, guys. Let me just finish. I'm about to finish. Uh, just hope it's gonna allow me to finish this network, guys. I'm just gonna it's gonna allow me to finish. All right. Anyways, uh, then on this side we divide two divided by a negative two, uh, a negative half. It's going to affect again the inequality because we are dividing by negative. The inequality was facing this side, so you're gonna see the inequality facing the other side. So it is gonna be like this. It will be facing this side like this. All right. And if you divide two divided by a negative half, this will give you a negative four. All right, this is what we have. All right, if you consider what I explained previously in the uh, on the introduction, like uh, the, 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 the first part that I explained, I said, the format of the solution always is supposed to be maintained. The format of the solution is supposed to be maintained. What am I trying to say? The solution is supposed to be in the form whereby we write it in this form of x, whether it's greater than or equal to, uh, less than or equal to a and b. The format of the, in the, the inequality signs should be facing one side and they must be facing the left side. And this is not what we have here. If we check, they're now facing the other side. Instead, they're supposed to be facing this side. So you're supposed to change that. So how do you rearrange? All right, x is pointing which part? x is greater than what? In this case, x is greater, as you can see, x is open to minus four. x is open, it's, it's, it's greater than or equal to minus four. It's bigger than, it's the one that is po it's pointing minus four. So meaning to say, we can rewrite this as x, still facing the same side, uh, which is this, uh, which is open, this is still having our x opened to minus four. So we're gonna have this x opened to minus four this side. So it is supposed to face this side, all right? So it's gonna be minus four like this. So we haven't changed anything. We still have the same x, as you can see, it's opened to minus four. It's pointing minus four. This is the same thing, x opened to minus four. The same x is being pointed by, as you can see, the, the sign, the inequality sign is pointing x. So you're gonna have the inequality sign pointing x like this. 
uh, so that is going to be a 10. So in this side, x is less than a 10. That is what we are simply having from this side. x is less than a 10. It's pointed by a 10, right? So that is x is less than a 10. So this is what we have. X is greater than or equal to minus four, but the same X is less than a 10. So that is how you solve the inequality, compound inequality. Then from there, we can have our solution on a, a number line as a given by the question you're supposed to have on a number line. So what are we going to have? Uh, yes, we can just indicate the minus four and the 10, the, those two numbers that you're given. But like I say, uh, as for me, it's best that you just indicate the zero so that we properly see where we have uh, these two. So uh, if you do that, maybe that's where we have your zero here. Uh, let's say that's where we have our zero. Then minus four can be somewhere there. All right. So minus four can be somewhere at this point. That's minus four. All right. Then a positive 10 can be somewhere here. That's where we're gonna have a positive 10 uh, somewhere there. Okay, now that we consider our x is greater than or equal to minus four. So at minus four, there's greater or equal to indicate a circle, which is shaded, and you shared the circle. But at positive 10, x is less than. You just draw a circle, you do not shed, just a circle as it is. You do not shed the circle, then you join. That's, that's how you draw the number line of a compound inequality like this, you join. All right, uh, I just hope uh, everything was clear. Uh, it's only that the disturbance of the sound, maybe I don't know if the sound is being affected, you know, this network guys, uh, but let's just hope everything is uh, understood uh, so that we can be able to attempt uh, a revision of both inequalities that we talked about, simple inequalities and these compound inequalities, which is a combination uh, whereby you are working with two inequalities at the same time. So we just hope to meet again with a video which is going to explain much on this part uh, with more questions and also to be together with question papers as we, as we move on to revise past exam papers so that it helps us now to understand the topic. How do they ask these questions?